21 Grand Slam Championships Tour credit, including five U.S. Open titles, Steffi Groff is arguably the greatest female tennis player in the Open era, and perhaps the best ever. For the last 18 months, however, age and injuries have diminished her extraordinary skills and threatened to end her career. Now on the eve of the U.S. Open, Groff is attempting to recapture her championship form and once again return to her customary place amongst the Tennessee elite. The Connecticut Tennis Center at Yale, site of the Pilot Pen International Women's Championship and a final boasting the number four seed, Steffi Groff, and the number two seed, Yana Novotna. Conditions hot and humid, 85 degrees with about 70% humidity and light breezes, but the temperature on the court hovering right around 100 degrees. Welcome everyone, Michelle Tafoya along with Patrick McEnroe, and as people are talking about the youth movement as we head into the U.S. Open, we've got a final with two grizzled veterans, Yana Novotna and Steffi Groff, and we begin with Steffi Groff, 29 years old, 21 Grand Slam titles, but it's been 14 months since she had knee surgery, and this is her first appearance in a final, Patrick, on her comeback trail. Yeah, we all know about the great history of Steffi Groff, but what's interesting now is her present. Where is she right now in her comeback? Well, the key to Steffi's game is her court movement. And she showed much improvement here in this match against Lindsay Davenport in the semifinals. She was able to run down a lot of Davenport shots there with a great backhand up the line. And of course, the big weapon is still there, Michelle. The Steffi Graf forehand is there. Her competitiveness is back. Her confidence in winning big points is the key. And she showed that determination in her win over Davenport last night. And speaking of confidence, there is Yana Novotna, also 29 years old, having the kind of year she's always dreamed of. Four titles, including her first Grand Slam title after winning Wimbledon in July. Well, Yana and Steffi go way back. They've played against each other 30 times, Michelle, and no one will forget this moment. 93 Wimbledon final when Yana Novotna had the match in her hands and let it slip away. Steffi Graf won the title, but this year she turned it all around. She erased so many of those memories with a big win at Wimbledon. She's won on different services this year also, Michelle. The grass, of course, at Wimbledon, the clay and indoors. If she could win here on hard court, over Steffi Graf, she'd prove how versatile a player she really is going into the U.S. Open. Well, these two have met 30 times. We have meeting number 31 coming up when we return to New Haven. CBS Sports presents the 1998 Pilot Pen International Women's Championship. A STA event sponsored by Pilot Pen. Pilot, use a real pen. Nike. And by Family Time Software. One day, all homes will be run this way. Welcome back to this sweltering afternoon in New Haven, Connecticut. The 1998 Pilot Pen International Women's Championship. Our chair umpire, Anne Lasser Ulrich. Overseeing things today between Steffi Groff and Jana Novotna. And here's how Novotna made it to the final. She had a first round bye, defeated Shonda Rubin in the second round. Talented Frenchwoman Emily Moresmo in the quarterfinals, one and six, and then a relatively routine win over Alar de Cougy yesterday. 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. Steffi Groff also had a first round bye made things look pretty easy until yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, the big, uh, the big win was over Amanda Kotzer, 6-3, 6 love. Kotzer had beaten Graf three times last year, but then last night, as we mentioned, Michelle, beating Lindsay Davenport, whom she lost to in a tough three-setter a couple weeks ago, and, and Lindsay's been the hottest player on the tour. She won three straight events, so that was a huge win. Steph was actually up 5-2 in the second set, serving, served for the match twice. As she said to me after the match, got a little bit nervous, uh, you know, not used to closing matches out, and in a way, I think it may have helped her in the long run because she really had to fight through that tiebreaker. She was down five love in the tiebreaker, came through uh, to win that in two sets, and I think that will really help her going into this match and, of course, leading into New York in the U.S. Open. And here's the head-to-head -head matchup we mentioned earlier. They have met 30 times so far, and Graf has a commanding lead. They haven't played each other, though, in two years, Patrick. Well, of course, a lot of that because Steffi's been out for a while. I think in a lot of ways you can disregard that 
head-to-head -head slightly because Lovano is certainly a different player now having won Wimbledon. Much more confident, I think. And Graf also is a, a little bit of a different player. Her serve, I noticed, didn't quite have as much sting on it yesterday in the match with Davenport. She talked about her movement, which is there. But what Nirvana's going to do is she's going to make Steffi pass her. She's going to come to net and put pressure on Steffi. And Steffi hasn't seen that too much lately. Groff will serve to open the match. with the big forehand. The good first serve is what set that up. She got that up to 99 miles per hour. She was hitting most of her serves in the mid-90s in her match with Davenport. Oh. There was a questionable call there early. Looked to be right inside the line. ball bounce there from that angle but we're sitting right on the line up here Michelle look to be inside the line ball will travel faster though during the daytime than it did last night in the match Steffi had with Lindsay Davenport so that means she'll get a little more MPH on the first serve consistently here's the second serve though. let's see if Novotna tries to attack early 15 all amazing stretch since Wimbledon 22 of the last that's including Wimbledon of course 22 of the last 23 matches she lost her first hardcore event of the summer to Sanchez Vicario in Montreal in the semifinal and that broke up a 19 match winning streak for Novotna 30-15 then Wimbledon, then two days later she played in Prague, her hometown, on clay. And she's not known really as a great clay court player over the years, and she wins that term. That shows what winning a Grand Slam like that can do for your confidence. You show up in Prague on your least favorite service and win the tournament. Taking the overhead out of the air. Steffi, a little smile on her face. She was behind the baseline. She made contact with that. Watch this lob. Good defensive lob from Nirvana coming up here. That's where Steffi hits this from. Oh. Great shot. Great angle. Novotna, one love in the first set here in New Haven. Well, Steffi Graf showing that she wants to take the net away from Novotna. Watch here now. If we can freeze it right here, and look where she's got Novotna right here fr frozen. Back in the middle of the court, she has to change direction, clear it. And just showing that she's actually going to attack Novotna and take the net away because she knows that Novotna is going to try to get in on her. Good early tactics from Steffi. We saw her use that play also that I was trying to show there, going behind the player. She used that against Davenport, who doesn't move as well laterally, but Novotna can cover a lot of ground. Oh, my. Yeah, a little slider out wide there. And it really didn't have that much pace on it, 86 miles per hour. First ace of the match. Quickly out to 40-15 for Novotna. What's impressed me about watching Novotna, Joel, is something that underestimated, I think, people when they talk about Novotna. She really covers the court well. Oh! 
Julia Clark talk about the variety of her game, the slice, the top spin, her ability to come in and volley successfully. But watching her play and watching her move along the baseline, she's real quick and she knows the angles well. She's a, a lot She's going to make Steffi work for her points. 40-30. Approaches here to the backhand. Steffi hits that backhand well, doesn't hit a winner, and then she can pick her spot with that big forehand. She can do that consistently. Yana Nevada is going to be in a lot of trouble today. There's that last return on the Mac cam, just long. It's a loose error there. A little shaky start for Novotna here, making a couple unforced errors. Deuce number two. Humid conditions, Michelle, and we're already going to the towel early. Very sticky out here today. You and I have had to do that already right. a couple of times. today. That time she does it on second serve. Steffi on top of the return, shipped it low. Great point for Graf. Deuce for She's looked a little shaky at net so far, but Nirvana shows why that Wimbledon title is hers now. Great touch. She played that volley short. She put a little extra bite on it. She was really in a vulnerable position, too, because Steffi had a good look at that forehand pass and to come up with a great big point. That's confidence. Deuce number three. She's struggling right now on serve, though. She seems to have no rhythm on the first serve. Takes advantage, just clobbers that return on. And another breakpoint opportunity for Groff. <laughs> really almost searching for the toss. She's searching for the ball a little bit. Gets away with it. See that? That's maybe a sign that Steffi play just not quite where she wants it to be yet. She works hard, she gets the break point, second serve, and just dumps the return in the net. Got to put the pressure on your opponent when you have that break point, particularly now that she sees Nirvana struggling a bit on serve. And continues to do so here on deuce number four. Going back to Novotna. Game in Novotna. Shoot hold. 
Bowls, and tomorrow on CBS Sports, it's more tennis action as sports and entertainment celebrities come together at Arthur Ashe Kids Day. And beginning Monday, it's the U.S. Open Championship from Flushing Meadows, New York. Join us each night at 12.37 a.m. for the U.S. Open Late Night Show, and for full coverage starting at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Steffi Graham, who she's played 30 times before. And a little bit of luck. Nevada guesses right here. Good serve, set it up, and she read that. Great feel to just be able to block that into the open court. Love 15. Nirvana running to hit that backhand before to make contact with that forehand up the line. We talk about good feel in a point. Talking about the ability to improvise shots on the run in awkward positions. There are the early errors. Groff four, Nirvana three. Yep, struggling a little bit with her movement back there, Steffi and Yana. Very smart, dipped the ball at her feet, forced her to hit the volley. Novotna now has a few opportunities Thank you. at a service break. attack the other's backhand side. We've seen that from both players. They look to get in, force their opponent to pass with the backhand. Neither of them really feel com feels comfortable coming over the ball, Michelle. They'll play that defensive slice. Still break point for Novotna. work from Steph here. She comes over that ball well. She's hit a couple nice backhands coming over. That sets up the forehand. She waits to the last second. Great movement gets her away from around the ball enough on the forehand side. Her fourth winner. Big one there. She was down love 40. Now we're at deuce. Three points here to get back in this game. Service winner and ace there for the match. And Graf holds. She's got the 2 1 lead in the first. We are on surf here at the Island International Women's Championship. Oh, yes. Well, if the first three games are any indication, Michelle, it's going to be a tremendously hard fought match. Both players coming up with their best stuff, down break points. Steffi here is getting the advantage at the full stretch and then showing nice feel. Blocking the cannon up the line. I don't know what she thinks is a good deep serve into the backhand corner, but Steffi's on it. 
Love 30. Oh, yes, beautiful volley. That's the first volley that she's hit, Michelle, where she hasn't actually been at full stretch. Steffi's made her work hard when she's gotten up to net. Here are the great volley skills from Nevada. The good slice approach. Watch the quick hand. This is a tough ball to the body. And low, right around her knees, slides that inside out, 15-30. 30 all. rhythm now with the first serve. Her second ace. She throws that toss up so high, Michelle and Yvonne, but actually both players do, so sometimes it takes a few games just to get a rhythm, know where the sun is, no sun today, but with the cloud cover, a little bit of wind can really alter your toss and your whole motion. Just as I say that, of course, I jinxed her with a high toss. It's always the analyst yeah. that jinxed the player. Exactly. First double fault, two aces for Novotna. Just a slight little breeze up there, the slightest. Players would like a little more. It's sticky down there on the court. Wow. Tremendous coverage there. We talked about her movement. Steffi Graf, Nevada gets to net, just doesn't quite do enough with the backhand volley. Right here, she plays it into the middle of the court. Steffi gets there in plenty of time, rifles it up the line. Graf with an opportunity to go up a break. CBS Sports, it's third round coverage of the NEC World Series of Golf Live from Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio. Take a look at that leaderboard. David Duvall, Tiger Woods, and Craig Perry all at five under entering the third round today. Phil Mickelson a couple strokes back. Marco Mira also there, one of the five players tied at minus one. A bad little leaderboard there, Michelle. Quite nice. Oh, yes. That's the good one-two punch there. The wide serve to open the court up. And then the inside-out forehand into the open court. Groff leading 3-1 here in the first set, and now up 15 low. with that point. Maybe because she let Steffi look at a forehand there. Watch this approach. She didn't get it cross court enough. Steffi steps around it, racks that forehand. Great touch there. Ooh, she got away with that a little bit because she was not in a great position on that approach. Unforced errors. Four for Graf, five for Nevada, and both players are already with more winners. So that's a sign of the level of tennis we're seeing here in this women's final. 15-30. 30 all. <laughs> Nevada, the world number three will be ranked number two as of Monday for making it here to the finals at the Pilot Pen. Thanks to Steffi in part for beating Lindsay Davenport in the semifinals. So Lindsay will drop three. And both Lindsay and Yana 
have a chance to overtake Martina Hingis if they were to win the U.S. Open. So a lot up for grabs, a lot at stake here and at the Open. Oh! 40-30. Definitely working over the forehand side of Novotna, too. That's her bigger shot, but it's also the one where she'll make a few more errors on. It's definitely directing a lot of her serves to the Novotna forehand and getting a couple cheap points. those top 10 rankings as they stand at the moment. Both Davenport and Nevada are really going to jump up. They're only, I think Davenport will be uh, Nevada three to 400 points behind Martina Hingis. So a lot's changed in the last year before it was almost over 2,000 point lead that Martina Hingis had. The gap definitely closing on the young Swiss teenager. And it's 520 points for winning the U.S. Open. And then you add up all the bonus points you get, Michelle, for beating the ranked players. Obviously, the higher ranked player that you beat, the more bonus points you would get, both on the men's and women's side. Advantage, Nevada. For instance, Michelle, if you would beat the number one player in the world on the men's side, you'd get 50 bonus points. If you beat the number two through five, it would be 45. Then you go all the way down to the player, say, ranked 150, and that would be one bonus point or two bonus points. So if you beat a lot of top players along the way, in a, particularly in a Grand Slam, where the bonus points are double, we're talking about a lot of computer points. service break to level things out here at the Pilot Pen. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. It works. Steffi Graf leading 3-2 to two here in the first set. Novotna serving now to level things out. volley point she's put together so far. It's down low for that forehand volley. This is just her third event, Nevada, mm -hmm. since winning Wimbledon. Hasn't been a tremendously active summer. Great lob from Steffi Graffel. Diana Vatna said she wanted to take take some time, enjoy the Wimbledon victory that she had. She put her rackets in the closet for a number of weeks after her win in Prague. Here's the topspin lob from Steffi taking that ball early, which caught Yana slightly flat-footed. About a week or a couple weeks before the Canadian Open in Montreal, Yana started her training up again, her physical training get herself ready, and that's smart. I mean, that's a sign that she has experience. She's 29 now, the same age as Steffi. You have to pick your spots a little bit more. You don't want to play week in and week out. 15.30. 30 all. That's experience right there. As soon as she saw Steffi put her head down to watch the ball to hit that slice backhand, watch, you can see this here. Yana sneaks in. See, Steffi doesn't see her right now. Then she comes in. All of a sudden, Steffi says, wait a second. You were just back at the baseline. In so quickly, she's got the open court there with the back of the ball. <laughs> Not only does that win her that point there, Michelle, but it also... Let Steffi think about the next time when she goes to hit that slice backhand.
fight that ball a little too much. Ball clips the tape. She's got plenty of time. She can go either direction. She holds it. She doesn't accelerate the racket because she realizes that break point now for Stephen Graff. out here in the first set. If we go back to Groff's previous service game. This is when Yana broke here. Now this is a break point now. Here's, she plays a good ball low here. Steffi's at full stretch. Now a freeze it right here. Now look how much coverage here Steffi has over here to cover all this court to work with. And so she just has a guy. Now clear that. Let it go forward. And instead of she just decides to stay put. Yana sees that. She holds the ball for the last second and dumps it into the open court. Oh! <laughs> A lot of times you have to pick, Michelle, when you're in a situation like Steffi was it? Should I just stay put? Should I do a little head fake? Should I sprint to the other side? Steffi had to stay put. Yana, because she has such good control with the racket, is able to hold it a little extra longer, play it into the open court. Oh! But a couple bad errors from Nevada that last game to lose serve. Two easy forehands. And that's the shot so far that's let her down in this final. Quick. 30 love lead for Groff. Steffi Groff currently ranked 38th, should jump into the top 30 on Monday. Oh, yes. That is movement, Steffi Groff. That's going to give her a lot of confidence right there. Because she had to stop and start very quickly. Watch the way she pushes off with her legs here. Yeah. From the serve here, good serve up the middle. Goes with the inside out forehand. Quickly is able to change direction. Bunt that up the line. Blends in the world. AccuView. It's how you see things. The harder. Bring it on. And buy Glad. Like it's crazy. Get Glad. Steffi Groff looking impressive in her comeback run here. Her first final on this comeback trail here at the Pilot Pen. Well, we've seen Steffi's court movement is up to snuff, her big forehand. But how about this, Michelle? I mean, she's adding a little something new, the little chip and charge play. The short ball showing great sense there at net. Gets down low, dumps it into the open court. Steffi, she's been to net six times in the match, four of six. When she goes to net against Davenport last night, she barely went to net at all. Novotna to come to the net much more than Davenport did. Definitely, and that's the reason why she's coming to net a little bit more. Novotna scrambling. Again, she shows her speed around the court. Great first step there. It also shows me, in addition to measuring her opponents and her strengths and weaknesses, that she's gaining confidence, Michelle Steffi Graf is. Oh. By showing that she's willing to come to net, take chances, put the pressure on a player like Novotna who can hurt her she gets to the net first. 40 love. Yeah, and an win. impressive love game now for Novotna. Kick off your Labor Day weekend on Saturday with the season premiere of NASDAQ College Football. The top-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes take on the West Virginia Mountaineers in prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then Sunday, it's the NFL on CBS. Doubleheader action. Many of you will see Bill Parcells and the New York Jets 
take on Jerry Rice and the 49ers. It all starts at noon with the all-new hour-long NFL Today. You want to check your local listings for the games in your area. tennis here both players using the angles different spins Yana's even having a good time trying to stay in this first set so Matt Cam on that last backhand from Steffi just going long love 15 Steffi holds here in this game. She'll have the set. This ball just a little bit wide. Good call by the lines person. Steffi in a little trouble with some of those overheads. She hasn't she made that one great one way by back by the baseline, but even in her match last night against Davenport and today, she's not that solid. Steffi I've seen years ago, the overhead. Oh! <laughs> Botna clearly upset with herself on that return. a little bit of that and Yana showing all the guile that she must can muster a couple times just making Steffi dig down low finally forcing her into error there 30 all Steffi really should have tried to take another step or two in after previous half volley but just still not that comfortable at net This is a little dissection going on here, Michelle. Again, the short ball really forces Steffi to come in. She doesn't want to. A little nubber there, and then a great cover there by Novotna. She's reading the angle and able to get enough stick on that ball from an awkward position. Gives herself break point to get the break back. Oh! has yet to double fault. Yes. Steffi wards it off and hangs on for Deuce. Huge point right there. And Steffi put a little extra slice on that shot. Kept it low. Realize how big that was. Maybe a little misguided attempt there by Novotna to try to come in off that ball. She should have, I think, played it back safely and waited for a better opportunity. Novotna now one of five on break point opportunities after missing out on that one. Oh. Advantage Novotna.
service break. Back to New Haven in a moment. Groff with a 5-4 lead. He both need. How sure can you be? Let's find out. Well, some cloud coverage here in New Haven has brought the temperature down. Yes, down. It was <laughs> right there about 100 degrees maybe a half hour or so ago, but clouds have moved in and cooled things off on the court for Steffi Groff and Jana Novotna. Downright pleasant out there now. And no bugs, which is a bonus, considering on Wednesday night during a match between Julia Larte Pugis and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, play was halted for nearly an hour due to gnats. <laughs> That's a new one. I guess this happened here before, years ago. Oh! Okay. We have a baseline there. Tight call. Nevada taking an extra look. Cam will, I'm sure, show us exactly where it landed, and good call. Just long. It's a close-up of Steffi's shoe there, too. It's a good-looking shoe. <laughs> Love 30. Second double fault of the match for Yana Novotna. She tells in this game now low 40. And Groff an opportunity to win the second triple set point. do with the new balls that they just had brought out. 5-4, they changed after nine games. Good crowd on hand here at the Connecticut Tennis Center. Record after winning the first set. Wow, Steffi 16-1 and one, as opposed to 1-5. One 1-6 and one and it was. <laughs> That's certainly a sign that the confidence is a big factor. The honors record after losing the first set, pretty strong. 7-5, yeah. 15 love. First game of the second set. Oh yes. Mention the new balls, Michelle. What they do is they fly through the air a little bit more. If you're not ca careful, the ball can really fly under that. Forehand with the double for fault long. Steffi hitting the ball with a little more conviction off the ground. So she's able to control it better now. Like there. Quickly out to 40 love. Steffi Groff says she spent eight months in limbo following that surgical makeover of her left knee. That surgery hair ruptured patellar tendon and cartilage tears. Okay. And the game quickly goes to Groff to take a one-game lead here in the second. Oh. The doctor's natural choice for regularity. the Connecticut Tennis Thank Center, you, Michelle Tafoya, Patrick McEnroe along with you. Let's <laughs> take a look at the first set that Steffi Groff won, six games to four. The thing that really jumps out at me, Michelle, is the first serve percentage. Excellent for Steffi Graf, just under 80%. That's outstanding. The winner's even, unforced errors, a couple less for Steffi. And she got that one extra break point converted, so that one break of serve winning her the set. The 
one extra break of serve, I should say. Three breaks for her and two for Novotna. Now Steffi brimming with confidence here. Under a little bit too, Michelle. Ivana feeling a little fatigued because she had to play doubles late last night that got halted in the third set, the semifinals. So she's, this is only part of her day. She's got this match, then she's got the women's semifinal in the doubles, and if she was to win the match, of course, play the final later. So that could be weighing on her a little bit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Steffi coming over again. So well, surprising to Vanna. There's a passing shot. Keeps it down, stays down low. That's smart. That gets it down low. Nivana's in tough position because she's behind the service line there, and then she's forced to cover too much territory. 15-40. Get him on the game. Goes to Brock almost as quickly as the first game did in this set. Tomorrow on Sports with more tennis action, more sports and entertainment celebrities come together at Arthur Ashe Kids Day. And beginning Monday, it's the U.S. Open Championship from Flushing Meadows, New York. Join us each night at 12.37 a.m. for the U.S. Open Late Night Show and for full coverage starting at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Patrick playing doubles. That's right. right. There at the U.S. Open. Getting ready for the doubles. We join you a few late nights on the late night show. I was going to say, talk about pulling some double duties there. <laughs> I hope. Hopefully I'll be able to play a couple matches. These first two games of the second set have gone rather quickly for Groff. <laughs> Speaking of double duty, Nevada is certainly used to playing one in Wimbledon, the singles, of course, and she won the doubles as well. Martina Hingis this year. Thirty love. Well, this is looking to be almost like steamroll time, Michelle. Steffi on fire right now. A big forehand. She's had plenty of time. Struggling to stay in this match now. Oh! And until that one, Steffi had won 14 of the last 15 points. That's 30-15. Good first serve. In fact, she hasn't missed the first serve so far in this set, Bill. So she was at 79% in the first set. She's picking that up, and she's very effective. She gets that first serve in. Steffi holds. She's got a three to love lead here in the second set. leading three love here in the second set, but it appears that Yana Novotna has requested her restroom break. She heads off the court. So we'll return to New Haven and the Pilot Pen International Women's Championship in moments. We are back at the 1998 Pilot Pen International Women's Championships here in New Haven, Connecticut, the Connecticut Tennis Center, the third largest tennis facility in the world. Steffi Groff won the first set 6-4 and has a three-love lead here in the second set. Both players taking a restroom break at the moment. And Steffi Groff, ranked number 38 in the world, is expected to jump up to number 28 on Monday. I'm sure her mother, Heidi, would like that. Heinz Gintar with the cap. Let's take a look at the draw from the women's 
singles at the U.S. Open. Novotna due to face off against Jennifer Capriotti, the young American trying to come back herself. So that could be an interesting first round for her. She's due to play Steffi Graf in the quarterfinal. Steffi, although she's ranked 38, she gets a special seeding in uh, the tournaments on the WTA Tour, of course, U.S. Open included. So we'll look at Steffi's side of the draw. So she gets the number eight seed. Uh, for seeding purposes only is that special ranking. She has a tough first round also against Morario, a young American who's a solid player, top 50 in the world, but they're due to meet in the quarterfinals, these two. And from the way things look and the way their draws look, I think there's a very good chance that they're going to be repeating this match in about a week and a half time. Oh! <laughs> Love 15, you mentioned Novotna going on to finish up her double semifinal and perhaps play in the final. If she wins that double final, she will be ranked number one in the world in doubles. And you mentioned she can fight it out with Martina Hingis and Lindsay Davenport for number one in the world in singles. Not many people have held both number one rankings simultaneously. Only two players, in fact, Michelle. Martina Navratilova, of course, who dominated in singles and doubles for a long time. And Arancha sanchez Vicario as well held the number one spot in both singles and doubles for a briefer period than, of course, Martina did. Yana finally able to put a couple points back to back, to back here. Had to get on the board in the second set. 40-15. Get in and Gookie holds to take that game. Obviously a short timeout was beneficial for Novotna. service profile, the first serve percentage up to 84%, remarkable percentage, she's won 67% of those points, and also <laughs> relatively successful, 43%, that's fairly mediocre for a second serve, but a lot of times you'll see players only winning, let's say, 30% of their points on their second serve, that's where you really get hurt, so Steffi's not getting hurt too badly, in addition to the fact that she's just not hitting that many second serves. one there and she misses it so that's just her first double fall. There's Heidi and her coach Heinz Gunhardt. Heidi on the left there, Heinz on the right. Groff said about this tournament, at first I wasn't supposed to be here. I was thinking about vacationing in Florida, but my coach got me to go and he made the right choice and I did too. That's right. She was saying she was going to go back down to Florida where she has a place and practice for the week and Heinz said, no, you need the matches, enough training, you need to get out there and compete. Certainly paying off here. That win over, a couple wins over. And the Kutzer who beat her a few times, Lindsay Davenport. And the Davenport win in particular, she said, was a, definitely a step forward for her. Oh. Be playing well this whole tournament, she said, definitely gives her confidence, and she really needs that going into the Open on Monday. 40-15. She 
He's got a 4-1 lead in the second set after taking the first. How long will this loan be for? 1-800-CLARITON. Back in New Haven, Michelle Tafoya, Patrick McEnroe along with you. Yana Novotna serving in the near court. Steffi Groff in the far court. <laughs> Steffi Groff has never lost here. No matter what this tournament has been called. It was the U.S. Hardcore Championships in 1988, 89, and 91 when she won the title. Every time she's come, she's won the title. No matter what it's been called, Michelle, or where it's been played, Steffi's been winning this one. Looks to be on course to do it again. Gianna struggling on serve. Really getting hurt on the second serve, particularly here in the second set. Thirty-three percent of the points on her second serve in the second set as Novotna now in trouble again at 15-30. She's also not winning the free points with her first serve the way Steffi has throughout this match. Novotna playing in her seventh final of the year. <laughs> Just her fourth hard quarter. 15-40 now. Seems a little bit resigned now, doesn't Novotna? Not even chasing that ball down. Steffi on top of the return. A break points for a 5-1 lead. So a service break for Steffi Groff to go up 5-1. Coming up next on CBS Sports, it's third round coverage of the NEC World Series of Golf. It's live from Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio. Nice looking leaderboard. Three tied, David Duvall, Tiger Woods, and Craig Perry at five under, and one of those five players tied at minus one, Mark O'Meara. <laughs> Serving for the match. Hasn't held it, won a title since May of 97. This match, just one hour, six minutes old. Took about 45 minutes to play the first set. Thirty low. Now Steffi going for everything, Michelle. The big second serve. Setting up Old Reliable, the forehand winner, which has been on today. Steffi Graf with 25 winners in this match, only 11 unforced errors. Great numbers. There's number 26. 40 love. <laughs> Serving for the championship. Her first of the year should you win this point. Not quite. Yeah, she, she's already running into net to shake hands. Saw that ball sitting right there for a forehand. This is the moment she's waited for ever since she started her comeback. <laughs> Starting to get a bit antsy too. They know what's on the line. Open. And a 
And a lot of relief, I think, as well, Michelle, for Steffi Graf. You can see how emotional she is. Here's a match point once again. Steffi reacting here to wrapping up her first championship in 15 months. And as I said, a lot of relief. Remember how emotional she was at Wimbledon when she went back to play there? Broke down in the press conference. And here you can see a little bit of that as well. Steffi's so glad to be back and feeling good, I think, when she's out there playing, not worrying about her knee. And I think along with that, we'll, obviously she'll be contending for Grand Slams and the U.S. Open coming up. Perfect timing for her. Yana Novotna, the Wimbledon champion, played a tough match, but Groff is the victor. We'll have the ceremony in a moment. This is the pot precise, one of the most unusual pens you'll ever write with. Let me show you why. How about a window that lets you keep an eye on the liquid ink supply? And what about these feeder rings? You can actually watch the ink flow through the pen. The color stays the same from the first line to the last. One final point, and here it is. Our precise needlepoint makes every word flow smoothly. At Pilot, we're always working on a better line. This is one of a kind. This is a very sensitive environment. I'm an environmental biologist and I work for mobile. When oil is found in a place like Newfoundland, you have to be careful uh, because the sea, the wildlife, but also this culture is very unique, rich in traditions, it takes a lot of communication between mobile, our partners, and the community. When the Hibernia platform was towed up, it was a great day here. I'm really proud about the homework that mobile has done. We work very hard to make sure that we are welcome guests in this country. Arthritis has claimed these hands. But take comfort. In the medicine, arthritis experts recommend first Tylenol. Tylenol is simply the most trusted combination of strength and safety in arthritis pain relief today. Tylenol. Take comfort in our strength. Kick off your college football season on CBS Sports as preseason number one Ohio State travels to West Virginia to take on Heisman Trophy candidate Amos Zaraway and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Just relax, man. This ain't nothing but football. Oh, it's more than just football. It's the return of the NFL on CBS. Bill Parcells takes his New York Jets to San Francisco to challenge the 49ers and Jerry Rice's return from injury. The time is now, baby. Actually, the time is 12 noon, doubleheader action, and it all begins next Sunday with the NFL Today right here on CBS Sports. And here in New Haven, Connecticut, Steffi Groff has won her first title in well over a year. And let's go down to the court now, and Patrick McEnroe with the ceremonies. Thank you, Michelle. We're keeping the crowd really good waiting here. It'll be great now for a great match. Thank you for having me. I can get a couple words for the whole to run her up and challenge if you choose to be the so kind to come over and chat with me for a second. John, I'm sorry, please. Now I need to get some rest and then start over again on Monday. Okay, uh, thanks. Yeah. Good luck. 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 Yeah.
15 months since you've held the trophy. Awesome. <laughs> that sums it up. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously it's been a long way, but um, now it's a pleasure to be here right now, to be at this point. I mean, it, it's been uh, worth doing what I've done. Well, Steffi, it's a tremendous match. You seemed to gain confidence as the match went on. Uh, you served in exceptionally well throughout the match, and you moved so well, and your forehand obviously was there again. Yeah, I mean, I've um, you know, worked real hard uh, on, on getting physically in a good shape, and it seemed uh, to be paying off, especially this week. I felt I was moving much better. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I, I felt my serve was going for me. I didn't really make a lot of mistakes, and I felt uh, I was controlling the points. Now, rumor has it that you wanted to be in Florida just preparing for the U.S. Open, but your coach over there, Heinz Gintar, said, no, no, you have to come to New Haven, get some matches. I guess that worked out all right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do too well in Montreal the week before and uh, I felt that maybe I needed a few days off and um, Heinz didn't think so and he was very right. <laughs> well, Stephanie, congratulations. Well done and good luck uh, going into the U.S. Open in New York. Thank you. It's here for 1998 Pilot Pen Women's Champion. Right now, I'd like to introduce the president and CEO of Pilot Pen America. He's going to present the award to the runner-up, Mr. Ron Shaw. Anna, we need you here. You have showed what tennis is all about this week. Your sportsmanship on the court has been remarkable. Uh, you've made us very proud. You know, it's the first time we've sponsored a ladies' tennis event. Uh, play and people like you make it very easy for us to decide we'd like to do this for a long time. Congratulations on being the runner-up. Not in the bottom, everybody. And now to present the championship trophy, Joy Rodenberg, the Vice President of the United States Tennis Association. Thank you, Patrick. On behalf of the half million members of the United States Tennis Association, it is my pleasure to present the perpetual trophy of the USDA Women's Hard Courts to this year's champion, Steffi Graf. Steffi, good luck at the Open. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1998 Pilot Pen Women's Champion, Steffi Graf. Patrick, thank you very much. There is the Pen Pilot Champion, Steffi Graf, and CBS Sports coverage of the Pilot Pen International Women's Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. This fall, the NFL on CBS, the way it should be. Your heart says it's time for a new car, but your budget Forget says... Forget about it. The answer, your upstate Ford dealer has dozens of BCF cars. Beautifully cared for, serviced by professionals, low mileage, still in warranty, pre-driven vehicles. At thousands of dollars off. Lease cars, demos, executive cars. Only you and your Ford salesperson will know it's not a brand new car. It just 